Hello, my friends. This is Andy coming to you live on a Sunday evening, 6.33. I missed it by three minutes. Um, and um, I want to talk to you about the difference between happiness and joy. There's a difference. Uh, and uh, I've known this for a while, but today's message at my church, really, um, this has kind of been on my mind, but really today's message <clears throat> from the great Jack Hibbs over at uh, Calvary Chapel Hill, uh, Chino Hills, <laughs> Chapel Chills, Chapel, <laughs> Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, Jack Hibbs, Wow. Uh, I've only had one sip of my uh, Jameson's whiskey here. So what I want you to do, because this is going to be, I'm going to try to keep it under an hour. All right. I'm just telling you, but stick around. I have some really good video. It's not just me talking. I got three different so far, I may add, but I have three different video snippets of about anywhere from three minutes to five minutes that will be worthwhile. Here's to you. So go grab a glass of wine, uh, some whiskey while I uh, hit you with my sponsors. This is going to be really important, though, so make sure you're still listening as I tell you about my sponsors. Uh, and uh, the first one I want to tell you, because it's really important that you get into this right here, and this is joinmelive.live. Um, I got the advanced portion coming out. Uh, I know people have been asking me, hey, when's it coming out? I can't wait. But some stuff has been happening, some new things <laughs> that I've been introduced to, and it keeps derailing me. Uh, in addition to my son, um, he auditioned for Falcon Films over at his, at his school because it's Tough Free Falcons. We, uh, I'm, I'm always messing up and saying Falco Films because that's, one of, that's what, one of the names of my production companies is Falco Films. He's with Falcon Films. Uh, but he's been, doing fil- he's been doing some stuff himself, videotaping, that kind of stuff. And it's so exciting. And just teaching him how to edit. And he's using editing. It's fantastic. But joinmelive.live is going to teach you how to do these shows that I'm doing right here, I, right now. I need you to also do what I'm doing and get out the word of whatever it is is your expertise. I'm hoping your expertise has to do with uh, being a conservative. Um, uh, maybe being a liberal and, and, and actually, you know, hitting your head on a rock and then coming uh, to your senses and uh, then turning conservative. <laughs> maybe hopefully that's happening. And you'll start your show and, and talk about how crazy uh, the left has, has gone and they've just gone completely nuts. And they're going to, it's, it's, they've gone even more nuts because of some things that have happened, obviously, over the last couple of days. But go to joinmelive.live. I'm going to teach you how to do your own live broadcasting. Did I ever get to that part? It's uh, It has a basic program, an intermediate program, and the advanced program should be coming out this week. Um, I've uh, filmed a couple. I've begun editing, them, and they should be up pretty soon. So go to joinmelive.live. You're going to then get, get stream. You're going to get StreamYard. Uh, StreamYard is the platform I'm using right now. It even has 1080p, which I'm not on right now. I'm using 720. Uh, I just forgot to hit the 1080p. But uh, it has a bunch of features. You're going to love it. Uh, and so go to getstreamyard.live, getstreamyard.live. That's my affiliate code. Uh, I will get some credit for you going to there. Uh, happy Coffee. Uh, and I don't have, where is my, there it is. Uh, so we got Happy Coffee, which has uh, uh, used nootropics which are the happy hormones, dose uh, is, uh, Dose stands for dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, uh, which gives you that happy feeling and gets you through the day. And then it has uh, appetite suppressants. I've gone from 215 pounds down to 191 the last time I weighed myself. Um, and, and it's really because of the appetite suppressant. I do intermittent fasting and some other stuff. But they also have zest, which is eliminate, and they have the peach tea, uh, which is fantastic. You will love it. And they have... Um, where is it? Uh, the new Elevate Max, which is a great new a- additional supplement that just it gets you going. Uh, people are talking about they have to <laughs> they have to stop themselves because they start vacuuming things like the top of the refrigerator and getting spider webs that they've been staring at for the last six months, and now everything's beginning to get clean because of uh, the Elevate Max. And then they have to set reminders to eat because the appetite suppressant is so good. Uh, and then one more thing I thought I'd tell you about is uh, today's CBD oil. Go to todayscbdoil.com and get this product right here. It's the best CBD on the market. It's patented. It's uh, got liposome t- technology, which allows the nutrients of the CBD to actually get into your system. So go to todayscbdoil.com. All right, let's see who's watching now. I got a few people I see coming on. Nabuko from Japan. We got an international uh, audience here. Hey, Nicole, uh, nice to see you. Uh, I'm so happy to see you. Uh, put down the whiskey. No, I'm not putting that. I just had one drink so far. I know. Um, but I, um, yeah, I'll have a, a few hits here and there. Um, and so I'm going to talk about this difference between happiness and joy. And I, and I've talked about it for years. I actually taught a, a teach a men's uh, group class several years ago, uh, that had some subject matter in regard to this. Uh, but today's message with the great Jack, which I'm going to share at the end. Um, uh, t- he ends on a, a portion of how this all works and what you need to understand when it comes to the difference between joy and happiness. Uh, God did not uh, guarantee us happiness. 
Um, and I always thought that he did. You know, I'm going, well, I'm never happy. And that's why I don't believe in God. And I see so much bad happening in the world. And why, you know, and nobody's happy. I don't, I don't see any happiness coming from uh, the hypocrites that I see at the church and all that kind of stuff. And I was always so angry about the church. And they go, there's nothing happy about the church. And uh, because I always believed that if, the, you know, that, you know, they, they talk about this great God. And if there's a God, then everybody would be happy. Um, but that's not what he guarantees. And you're saying, well, what about joy? How is that different than joy? Well, joy is in your adversities. Uh, and I'm, I've been talking about this tattoo I want to get. And there's a couple different verses. And I'm, I'm not going to state them right this second because I don't want to derail myself from the message itself. And that's just the overall idea that you have joy in knowing where you're going. You, you know, as a Christian in particular, you know that once you get through this challenge of life, uh, the craziness of life, the craziness of pandemics and all the other kind of stuff that you maintain joy because you know that this is just part of life because on the other end is heaven. On the other end is a, a is, is time you're going to spend with God, is time you're going to spend with Jesus and uh, other believers that uh, decided that Jesus was their lover and say, I'm going to sneeze and I don't want anybody to think they have COVID when I sneeze. And it's going to happen here. Um, and so this joy is odd. It really is odd because it comes out in me in all kinds, it especially comes out in me when I've got some huge challenges in my life. Right now, it couldn't be more difficult. And I'm not saying anything that you are all not going through. It is the, it is one of the most challenging times financially that I've had in a very long time. Now, I've lost businesses and lost everything. They almost foreclosed on my house. I've told that story uh, several years ago. They hung a sign on my door saying you had to be out in 30 days. This house that I'm in now. So obviously, I didn't lose it. And this was several years ago. But it couldn't have been darker. Well, that was pretty dark, but that was my own doing. I had made some bad decisions. I had hired the wrong people, and I literally lost everything from a bad business decision. Now, I could only blame myself. Now, in this era uh, of what's going on now, I, I, I did not bring the pandemic. <laughs> I did not uh, you know, decide suddenly that I wanted all four of my kids you know, homeschooled when I'm also trying to run a business. Um, I didn't say that I want all the courts to be closed down so that I no longer have a business. Um, and so it is very challenging. This is, um, it is difficult. I'm, I'm about as broke as you could possibly get right now, but yet I have joy. And I've told you all this. I've talked about this at all my shows, the different shows, whether it's the, the wellness show or the dog training show or this show in some of the other um, uh, uh, subject matter that I've talked to that um, I think this is one of the best times in our history. One of the best times. We've had a lot of really good times in our history, but this is one of the best times in our history because it's shaking stuff up. And you go, how can you be so happy about things being shut up, about wearing a mask? Oh, rah, rah. Well, I think all that stuff is crazy, number one. But it really is shaking us up. The, the, the fact that we have the best president we've ever had in our history. Uh, and I know people are going, what were you talking about? You're crazy. Now I'll watch the numbers go. go. I have probably had half the audience may have been uh, thinking this was something else. But <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we have this president who is just not a politician, right? He's just not a guy who speaks in a way that people like. He's just, he's a businessman. He's a guy that I would have hung out with uh, and still would hang out with today that says things that aren't necessarily politically correct because I don't. Um, my son was filming. He's uh, been tasked with doing the next uh, message for their school uh, that they do on in the morning, right? It's like a, it's a it's a live, not a live. It's a recorded broadcast of you know this is happening in our school. Don't forget about this club. Don't forget about that club. Don't forget to sign up for this and that and the other thing. And so he's doing. He's he's got his chance on Wednesday for his uh, uh, message to the school. And uh, to hear him uh, talking just makes me smile because he's not going to necessarily, I hope, go through the challenge where I went through three years of looking at a camera going, hi, my name's Andy and I train dogs and I'm really good. And I had no humor. I had no smile. I had I threw in none of my personality into it because I was just really stiff because I I had no mentor. I had nobody to look at. Now, I'm not saying I'm the mentor necessarily. However, I obviously now am not doing that, right? I have a little bit more personality. I wave my hands. I mess up and I don't care where when I used to mess up, I'd really care. It used to bother me. It used to throw me off. And I couldn't almost finish my broadcast because I stuttered a word 
or um, I, I couldn't remember somebody's name or whatever. And then all I thought about for the rest of the broadcast was the fact that I couldn't remember somebody's name. And it used to just really kill me. And then I'd start sweating and I normally don't sweat at all. And so I was always going that through that thing. So what I'm hoping uh, when I see my son um, uh, recording a video and seeing some of the stuff he does, and I, I just laugh because he's really funny. Um, I'm not going to tell him that because he'll get a really big head, but he's super funny and, and has his own personality. And it's really, really cool. And so that, that excites me that the, the struggles that I went with, the pain that I went with, went through is now giving me joy because I'm hoping by him watching me click the live button and just going live and begin talking often without a script. Like right now, I don't have a script necessarily. I don't have anything that I'm looking at. Uh, and I'm able to get through it and talk. Hopefully, I, I, I'm going to tell you one other thing that happened today that tells me that actually this is getting out and people are watching it. But that he can see that I can do that now and don't have the worries that now he doesn't have to go for the through the four to five, six years that I went through trying to figure stuff out and trying to figure out that, you know, people really don't care when you mess up a word. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Everybody messes up a word. Um, and, and, and you, and you finally, and you finally get over it. Um, you definitely have a personality. Thank you, Casey, or Cassie. Oh, I can't see. I'm horrible with names. Um, normally that would have bothered me like, Oh, Dandy, you, you just messed up that name and now they're going to hate you forever. You know, I'm sure that somebody has also messed up her name from time to time. Um, and so my, my joy comes in, um, and it's different than happiness, right? I'm not happy. Uh, about certain things. I'm not happy about the pandemic. I'm not happy that sometimes I have internet glitching problems or my computer breaks down or that I can't get the lighting right or that sometimes I forget to put up my camera. Like that isn't making me happy, but I do have joy that I have this uh, obvi uh, this um, awesome kind of responsibility that somehow God has given me to speak to you about things that maybe other people won't speak to you. That I have the, um, uh, um, the gumption to talk about things that other people are afraid to talk about, that they don't want to put on their Facebook page or they don't want to post or they don't want to say out loud that they can't because they'll get fired. I, got, I can't tell you how many people I know that say, I can't say what you say. I can't post what you post because if I do, I'll be fired from my job. And the, the fact that I have that ability to be able to do this where you can watch it and know, oh God, I wish I could say that. And then at some point, then I have other people that say, you know what? You've convicted me. And now I see on their Facebook page that they're saying, no, I've had enough. I've had enough of the stupidity. I've had enough of people looting and saying it's okay. I've had enough of people burning down buildings and ignoring it. I've had enough of uh, uh, people destroying our children in our schools and teaching them things that simply do not need to be taught to our children, that that is a, 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 a parent's responsibility to teach our children certain things, not the school. Like Black Lives Matter is really not a thing. It is a Marxist terrorist organization. It is not a thing. That our children that are watching NBA or the, um, uh, the what's the baseball one? The professional baseball people, what are, whatever that's called. You got the NHL, you got these other people. What is it? MLB. Ma yeah, MLB, Major League. Thank you, son. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> um, that they're, they're teaching our children because they, they happen to be big fans of these professional uh, people and organizations that they're the ones that say, Black Lives Matter. And, they're, and, we're, and then our kids are going, Dad, they're saying Black Lives Matter and you're saying that they don't. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying that we're, there's, there's, we're all the same. Black, brown, yellow, red. We're all the same. The, the fact that they are putting people in these little categories is what is racist. The black people that are saying that black people matter than anybody more than anybody else is racist. It's just the same as if we said white people are more important than anybody else. It's no different. And that you have NBA and Major League Baseball saying these things and then people are putting up these little black squares and, and making statements is just a, is this craziness. And, and, and that I, people are afraid to even say that that's crazy is, is my message here. The, the joy that I'm getting now coming back to the joy part is so I'm, so I'm not happy about all that stuff, but the joy that I'm having is that there's people like myself and Jack Hibbs and other people that are saying, all right, we've had enough. You know, we've been quiet, right? A lot of people have been quiet and they call, and they call it the uh, silent majority. And the silent majority is no longer um, uh, become uh, is not is not staying the majority any longer. It is now becoming less a majority, and I have joy in that, and that's what makes me happy. I have joy in the, what I learned in church today. I have joy in that I know where I'm going to go, regardless of what's happening with me now. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some videos from yesterday's event called um, Come Back California, which if you didn't see it, it was an all day conference. It was held online. You got to find it. Go to comebackcalifornia.com. US, I believe it is. Uh, hold on, let me look. 
uh, come back California.us. Yes. Uh, they had uh, Larry Elder, Dennis Prager, Seth Gruber, who uh, uh, runs the Life Training Institute. You had Liz Wheeler with OAN TV, host and commentator. Heidi St. John. I'm going to show you a clip from Heidi St. John. Uh, I'm also going to show you a clip from Dennis Prager. Uh, Karen Engel, Executive Director of Capital Resource Institute. You had Melissa Melendez, California State Senator, 28th District. You had Don Dix, who was the radio host, who is the radio host of John, Jen and Don Show. Um, he was actually the host of the event. Uh, and then Charlie Kirk. Oh, you got to know who John is. He's a really is a young dude who goes to colleges and, and sets people straight. I, I love it when he goes out. I love when he speaks. He spoke at our church uh, a few weeks ago. And then, of course, you had our, our great pastor, Pastor Jack Hibbs. Come back, California. And then he had a bunch of other speakers that kind of inserted themselves. Uh, but if you haven't seen it, you want to go there, go to Calif- comebackcalifornia.us. Uh, I'll put the link here. Let me copy the link and I'll put it in the uh, chat. <clears throat> uh, there we go. And and just click on that and just watch. What shirt do I have on? Oh, it's a, a sale. <laughs> Somebody said, nice shirt. Uh, yes, I love this shirt. It's, a, it's for our vets, our great company, Vasail. I told you about uh, today, um, uh, we had the We had the cream, CBD cream, and that kind of stuff. But we have a great support. If you're, with, if you're a veteran, um, you can get, I believe you still can get um, signed up for half price. You sell products, you get a discount. It's, it's fantastic. And you get to make money from a very great company. All right. So uh, the joy, and if I could, and I'm hoping that I'm, I'm hitting this, and I know that I'm kind of going all the way, but the joy is that. That God is great, that we're going to heaven, that um, in all of the turmoil, things are being exposed. I, I love that the Democrats, the liberals um, are, are being exposed. The left are being exposed as a, a very um, um, angry people that um, have lost their way, that are lacking common sense and are simply trying to destroy our company, our country. That this is being exposed on a daily basis. And we have to have some joy in that. That we we've, we've allowed it. You know, the, the joy that I don't have necessarily is that we've allowed it to happen for so many years uh, during the years of Obama uh, and Clinton and the Clintons. That we allowed that all to kind of slowly begin to happen over years. This isn't something that happened overnight. When I when I oh I don't have the book. It's called Color Communism and Common Sense. Um, I don't. It's in my backpack. I don't have it. But if you haven't read that book, it's all in there. It was written in 1958 um, by a black gentleman who um, uh, tried. Uh, you know. Uh, his hand at being communist uh, for a bit. And uh, that book is exactly what is happening today. If it was written in 1958, and if you read through it, all the stuff that was happening in there, um, it, it, it is almost an exact playbook for what is happening today. And it's a spectacular book. And you really got to read it. I've been reading it during the day. If you're not a friend of mine on Facebook, then friend me because I only do a that broadcast where I talk about that book and some other stuff on my personal page uh, during the day. Um, and it's not a regular show. It's just me coming on and talking about that book. I, I talked about um, uh, 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 the daily uh, devotional from my utmost of his highest. And it is amazing. So our joy right now, at least my joy, is that uh, it is our our country is waking up. Uh, California is waking up and I, and I believe that, uh, there's going to be a lot of change coming up because we're, uh, again, we're no longer a country of a, a silent majority that there's many people speaking up these, these Trump, uh, uh, flotillas, uh, that are happening in California and Florida and other areas are, are not from the Republican party. Nobody's setting the, I mean, it's, it's a group of people not related to the Trump organization setting those up. It's just people like that are just tired. Um, and you have, um, um, you know, these parades and you got, um, what was it? The Amish, you know, held a parade for Trump yesterday or the day before yesterday that, you know, that wasn't like, Trump goes, you know, I'm going to go to the, to the Amish country and I'm going to get a bunch of Amish people to hold a parade. He didn't know he is smart and is intelligent and what a genius that Donald Trump is. He did not, I am sure, get a hold of the Amish representative and say, hey, could you hold a Trump parade? All right, uh, Donald Trump Jr. didn't go down there and say, you know, hey, could you? Hold? No, these are spontaneous events that are being brought up. Um, the, the Your Melinda Uncensored group that we have here um, is, is a great organization. Every couple of weeks, every few weeks, uh, they set up a rally uh, that occurs in Your Melinda uh, and it is a fantastic rally. That is not on the direction of Donald Trump. And so the joy comes in the things that are happening, both in our uh, our communities, in our churches, um, in uh, the Republican Party, that you have to have, have joy in that. And they, in the end, the joy is going to be that, uh, you know, as long as as long as we are um, um, 
upholding God's law in the way that we talk. I am not great at that. I'm going to tell you right now, I am not good. Um, I allow some sin. I allow some of my personality to come in and I call people morons, dimwits. <laughs> uh, I, I point out that they have lack of common sense and I, you know, I'm, I struggle with that. However, um, <laughs> I just do, but, but I'm telling you that, um, I'm, I'm much better than I used to be. Uh, and I, but I, sometimes you have to use strong language. Again, I, 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 one of the things about Donald Trump that people don't like is it uses strong language and he says, but it causes things to happen. And I think in some ways, if he wasn't so harsh sometimes, or if he wasn't, so not politically correct that it wouldn't get noticed. It wouldn't, it wouldn't come out and cause a ruckus and cause a stir, right? And out of the stir sometimes, uh, comes, uh, out of, out of, uh, sometimes comes some goodness, right? It, it takes uh, Jesus to tip over a table with, with all the coins and the riches of, of what they're trying to sell at a market. Right? When, you know, Jesus sometimes has to get pissed and turn over the table where everything goes, to wake people up, to bring joy through anger. And anger can bring joy. Adversity can, can, can bring joy. And so, um, I, I think it's true. When I, when I first got diagnosed with cancer, um, you know, you, you're sad, you cry, you're not happy. But in the end, I've been able to write a book about it. I've been able to speak to people about it. I spoke on stage about it. I've talked about Jesus and God, about you know my relationship, how it's gotten stronger because of my cancer. And that, and that is a, a place for joy. And that I can talk to people. People email me and say, hey, I, I saw your speech, or I saw you talk, or I read your book, and it changed my life. And now I'd get to something that happened today, which was really, really awesome. And I, and I don't know if they're watching right now, and they may be watching, uh, but uh, I was at church today. And uh, 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 three people, three or four people, I can't remember. It was either three or four people. Uh, it was a couple and then another young lady. Uh, and they came over and they had this huge smile on their face. And I, and I didn't really recognize them. Um, and they said, hey, we watch you. And I just, we just wanted to say hi. And uh, we see you on Facebook and we watch your show. And we, every time you come on, we stop everything. They, don't, well, they said something very similar. Like, I mean, we stop. We say, hey, we have to stop and watch Andy's on. And my son, my 14-year-old son was there. And my uh, nine-year-old son was there. And... Um, you see my son, like, look, like he just had this big smile on his face. And, um, and it, it, there is a little bit of an ego. Obviously, we all have an ego and that kind of stuff. But I just saw, you know, the joy in his face. I, I felt like, wow, I have people that recognized what I was doing and paid attention and then took time out of the day to say hi. And, and that there's some way, hopefully, I'm having a positive impact on somebody in a positive way. That is always my concern that in, in spite of sometimes I say things that may not polit be politically correct, that in the end that it's, it's towards good and that it's towards something that's very positive. But to have four, I think it was four people for some reason. I, I know for sure there was three. There, there was a, oh, it was a little child. Never mind. That one doesn't count because the child's gone. I don't even know who this guy is. But the other three were adults. Uh, and they come over and say hi and say that they've been watching and they tell their friends and, and what, what have you. I thought it was pretty awesome. Again, I don't know if they're on now or going to watch or something, but, um, um, I, uh, they just sent me a friend request yet. They've been watching on one of my, one of my other pages apparently. And so it's just, it's really, it's really cool. So some of these things happen. All right. So what I want to do now is I'm going to bring in a couple speakers to, uh, add to the point that, um, it's, um, you know, people get caught up. And I think that's some of the problems with liberals and Democrats and the left. And I'm, I'm separating them today. I mean, I remember I've, I've just put them all into one bucket. They're all the same now. The Democrats have lost their way because now they have a bunch of left lefties and Marxist communists that are leading them and will lead them. If, if, if Biden gets elected, if Harris gets elected, Harris becomes the president of the United States and, and, you know, the Harris administration, as she said, and actually, as he said, if they come into power, then you are going to see a huge problem in our country. Uh, and it's going to be bad. Um, and so what you, um, what I, what I see as the joy that I'm having right now is that they're completely being exposed as these horrible, People that have no, uh, do not have the best interest in our country in mind, that they want literally want to destroy our country. And so what I'm going to play first is um, Dennis Prager. Dennis Prager was speaking yesterday, and I'm just going to play a portion. It's about four or five minutes. It's a, it's long in, in regard to what I would normally play on a show. Usually I try to keep it down to a minute or two at the most. But I think it's going to lead into the different aspects of where we can get joy from some of the, and I want you to take away the fact that he's able to talk about the jealousy that sometimes we have in our lives. The jealousy is a horrible thing that, that it, it, it destroys joy. And that's what we see with the left, right? The left is 
saying that, you know, um, uh, uh, capitalism is horrible, that we need to be all equal. That is not how our world works. Even in the Bible, it never talks about that everybody needs to be equal. It, it, there's not. We have slaves, right? We have prostitutes. Um, we have um, uh, people that are, have um, leprosy. Uh, we have uh, uh, people that are murderers. And we have, um, you know, people that are just fishermen. Just, I'm just saying, using that in the sense that, you know, we would consider a fisherman less than a doctor, perhaps, or something like that. It really is not. The, it's, it's just how our world works. And out of greatness, sometimes comes a murderer, strangely enough, right? He becomes an apostle. Uh, but we, uh, you could be a fisherman and lead millions of people to God, right? With very little money. Um, and you could be a carpenter like Jesus Christ and, and, and change the world for thousands of years, if not for the rest of the uh, eternity, right? A carpenter uh, it becomes a, uh, is a God. Uh, and is Jesus. And, and you don't see that in um, the world of the Bible, that it's just people. Some people have money, some people don't, some people have skills, some people don't, some people are lazy, some people are not lazy. And you have, this is the way that our world works. But when it comes to jealousy, uh, it can be a very bad thing. So part of what Dennis is going to talk about is that I don't know what you're talking about when you're talking about color. I don't necessarily know what you're talking about. I see that you're black. I see that you're brown. I see that whatever. But why does that have to be an issue? I see that you have a drive a nicer car than I do, but I still think you're cool. I'm not jealous of you. I don't, I don't even think about it. And that's how, that's how conservatives are, right? That everybody is just people, but liberals and left and, and the Democrats, everybody has this, you're black, you're white, you're LGBTQ, LMNOP. Um, you're all these things. You're not, you're just people. All right, so let me get to Dennis. You're going to really like this, I think. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. Let me just see here. Um, thank you. Oh, my gosh. I appreciate that so much. That ugh, You're going to make me – I'm going to tear up. I'm glad I'm going to a video because I'm going to – oh, that would be awesome. I would love to do that. All right, so um, let's go ahead and get rid of my lower third here, and I'm going to bring up Dennis Prager. So listen to what Dennis Prager has to say. And, uh, again, these are going to be a little bit longer than normal. I have three of them. But each one of and so just get a drink, get a get a a whiskey, get a, a wine, get a water, whatever it is, and sit down and enjoy a couple of these clips. If you did not see Come Back California again, the link is in the comments. You're gonna watch all. It was nine o'clock in the morning until five in the evening. You're gonna watch them all. You don't have to watch them all in one sitting, but I'm telling you, you're gonna watch them all. All right, here's Dennis Prager. And. Fact, needless to say, by a three to two vote, they voted to remove it. And I, and I remember looking at them and offering the following. I, I was in the Soviet Union uh, when I was very young, because that was my field of study, communism and Russian. And I remember hearing a Soviet dissident joke. And it went like this. In the Soviet Union, the future is known. It's the past that's always changing. It's a brilliant line, and that's exactly what the left is doing to America. The past is changing. What started in L.A. with the removal of the cross is going across the country, not just about the cross, but about American history. The New York Times created this gigantic lie, and I use that word very rarely. It's a gigantic lie that America was founded in 1619, not in uh, 1776, because the whole history of America is a history of slavery and racism. So when the first slaves came, that's when it started. They don't note uh, uh, that. I mean, they lie. For example, they say that the American Revolution was solely about keeping slavery. I mean, this is a new interpretation of the American Revolution. And they don't note, for example, that while 340,000 or so Africans came to America as slaves over the course of a couple of hundred years, 12 million went to Brazil. We have 3% of the slaves that came from Africa compared to Brazil, for example. But there are no demonstrations against Brazil because they hate America. They don't hate Brazil. It's about America hatred. It's not about slavery. Everybody had slaves. Anyway, so I told you the story about the cross because now we're seeing American history rewritten just like they did in L.A. County. 
And symbolically, the removal of the cross is the removal of the religious origins of this country. And that means the end of the country as we know it. This country was founded on the belief that all men are created equal, that we are endowed by our creator, our creator, with certain inalienable rights. Because if you are endowed by your creator, our creator, with rights, they can't be taken away. What God bestows, man cannot take. What man bestows, man can take. If our rights come from government, we have no inalienable rights. It's definitional. And as I said, you don't have to be a believer to understand that that's true. You may not believe that there's a creator, but that's not what we're asking you to believe. We're asking you to not believe, but affirm that only if there is something above humans from which we get our rights are these rights inalienable. So this is what is happening to America. Our past is being erased, and the American trinity is being dissolved. What is the American Trinity? Christianity has a trinity. So does America. I I didn't make it up. I made up the term American Trinity. I didn't make up the contents. They're on every coin. Liberty, in God we trust, a pluribus unum. The left is opposed to all of them. It is opposed to liberty everywhere the left. I'm not talking about liberals. Liberals have nothing in common with the left, though, unfortunately, they don't know it, so they vote left. But in fact, liberalism has always believed in liberty. Leftism has never believed in liberty. From Marx to Lenin to the American left today, liberty has never been a left-wing value. They believe in equality, the French Revolution versus the American Revolution. Our revolution was religious and liberty-based. The French Revolution was secular and equality-based. Equality of result. We don't believe in equality of result because liberty conflicts with equality of result. If baseball players and doctors or nurses have to make the same amount of living, uh, the, same, uh, the same income, then obviously uh, you have eliminated liberty. Liberty means there will be inequality. Certain people will make more money than others in a free society. That is the way it works. Some people have more talent. Some people have more luck. Some people uh, have a work harder. That's just the way it is. I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I have no problem. I grew up in the middle of the middle class. The, my neighbor had a Cadillac. My father had an Oldsmobile. My father was two ranks down from my neighbor. You knew a person's income by which GM car they drove. Cadillac, Buick, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, Chevrolet. So we were in the middle. We had an Oldsmobile, and I thought we were unbelievably well off having an Oldsmobile. My mother had a Pontiac. My father had an Oldsmobile. It's a tr- terrible patriarchy in my home. Anyway, my neighbor had a Cadillac. I, it never occurred to anyone in our family to be jealous of our neighbor. It, 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 if you would have asked me, do you envy your neighbor? I would have thought, what, what are you, crazy? What do I care? I'm living a great life. He has a Cadillac, more power to him. What do I care? Anyway, equality versus liberty. In God we trust versus a radically secular society. Not just secular government, secular society. We, we wanted a God-based society, and I will explain why in a moment. And e pluribus unum, from many, one. We believe that if everybody becomes an American, we can absorb people from every race, every ethnicity, every nationality. That was the American promise. But the left doesn't believe in that. They believe that Americans are not one, that you are black and you are Hispanic and you are this and you are that. To the extent that we are now told that if you're colorblind, you are a racist. I grew up as a liberal. Of course I did. I'm a Jew from New York. What else could I grow up as? And I, uh, I was told that colorblind is the ideal. I still think it's the ideal. That's the liberal ideal. It's another example of liberal left difference. The left does not believe that you should be colorblind. 
liberalism does. Of, of course I see your color if I see you're white or you're black or you're yellow or you're red. But so what? I see your hair color too. I see your height. So what? Does that determine who you are? Is your hair color important? Why is your skin color any more important than your hair color? But uh, I don't know. Give me an answer to that. There is no answer. Skin color means nothing to people who believe that we are created in God's image. But I love that. And that's exactly what I'm saying, is that the, the, the joy, and again, the, the joy that I think that I see in what he was talking about is that it, it, there's so much stress in being jealous. There's so much stress in seeing the differences of people as opposed to the oneness of what we have here in the United States. The United States of America, there's no other country like our country. There is simply no other country like our country. Canada comes a little bit close, and I think maybe Australia, but there's no, there's no country that we have people breaking into our country, and yet nobody's breaking out. Everybody's trying to get into our country because we have the greatest country in the world, because we have the freedoms that we have, that we we have a history of loving people coming to our country, and yet we're being told that we are a horrible country, that we are a racist country. It is the oddest thing when you really look at who we are as a country, as our history. From the time of our inception, we were trying to abolish slavery, even before the Civil War. There was always a constant movement trying to abolish slavery, whether you believe it or not, that, that, that is the truth. It is the truth. When you really look down at the history of what was happening is that there was this constant um, abolition movement, but it was so normal to have a slave. I mean, it was normal to have slaves in Roman's time. It was, uh, it was normal to have slave, slaves in China. We've had uh, a history in our country, of course, of bringing Chinese in to build our railroads, right? Of course, we've had a history of, of doing things during World War II where we put the Japanese in camps because they were so worried that they were um, going to destroy our country. There, there's fear, right? When fear kind of gets into our world as opposed to having joy, when fear is the thing that's controlling us, we make dumb mistakes and we do stupid things. We have fear going on right now, which is causing us to do stupid things. Fear causes us to close down our country. Fear causes us to close down our economy. And then we realize, wait a minute, the only people that are really dying are the elderly. Why don't we just protect the elderly? But yet the fear is still kind of gripping us, right? We don't open our schools. We're still closing down our cities and our and our industries and our and our store. Some of our stores. The little stores are dying. The little gyms are dying. The big companies like Amazon are flourishing. The big companies like Walmarts and the and the, did I say Amazon? Um, um, what else? The, the big companies, right, are are flourishing and doing well. We are crushing the little guy, the small business owners, because of fear. Fear is destructive. Fear caused us to create uh, Japanese uh, concentration camps here in the, United, in the United States. Now we didn't do what the the Nazis did. Right, we didn't exterminate any of them, but it really we 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 housed them and put them in a camp uh, because we were afraid because the fear was killing us. The fear, it's it's when we talk about joy. Now we're not happy about our Pearl Harbor being bombed, right? We weren't. You, you can't be happy about that, right? We weren't happy about nine eleven. We weren't happy about a bunch of stuff, but in that kind of um uh um that transition of being peace and of having peace to suddenly being attacked. We got to be careful that fear doesn't grip us and cause us to make mistakes, right? We have to have joy in that who we are in our country. We have to have joy in that what our great president has created in a very strong military joy in that he created a strong uh, economy prior to the uh, pandemic. And those are the things that I always look at. I say, thank God president Trump is our president at the time that we had a pandemic because our economy was so strong, it's still strong to this day. It's been weakened. It's been reduced. But thank God I have joy that we had a president that had our, not knowing that a pandemic was coming, not even knowing. But thank God that he was so um, um, good at creating a strong economy that reducing our um, uh, unemployment down to such a low level that when it came down to closing down our economy, that we didn't fall so badly to a point that we were just not, could not return. Can you imagine if we, if we had the lower economic uh, situation that we had 
uh, during the Obama era in the Clinton era. If it would have been so bad, now people are going to say, oh, it was really, listen to me. If it was bad, if it was not as strong as it was, I'm telling you, we would be far worse off than if uh, than, than, than President Trump being our president. And so we have to have joy in these things. Have joy in these things. It, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the pandemic. I'm not. Ha- I hate wearing a mask. I, I wear a mask as little as possible. I go to church with three thousand people on each service, right? At least twelve thousand people go to my church every Sunday with no masks, no social distancing, and not one person that I know of that ever been reported has gotten sick or died. Now, there possibly somebody got got infected, but we don't know. Nobody cares. I don't know what people are talking about. I have, I have no concept of what you hear on the news. Everybody's afraid of the. No, I don't know who's afraid. I, I know maybe two or three people on my Facebook page who are afraid. I'm not afraid. I have joy in that I know where I'm going to go. If I get it and die, I know where I'm going to go. But we've had worse stuff. When you really consider it, people are dying. I know that it's real. I know that. Well, I have a feeling it's real. <laughs> and I know that the elderly are dying, but we have no child in California that has died from COVID-19 and yet our, cl- our, our classrooms are closed. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I should have been finding something while I was gone. My rant here. I'm gonna, I got another uh, speaker here, um, Heidi St. John. I'm going to try to get at least close to where her, there was, a, she had some good stuff and we had some crazy laws come through here in California, a, a pedophile law that it reduced the, um, uh, the um, uh, punishment for pedophiles in our in our state. Wow, hold on one second. I'm having trouble finding this. Well, I'm in a 56. Hold up, I, I got to concentrate. We, uh, I was a sex crimes detective, at Anaheim Police Department, and one of the worst things that I uh, dealt with is that I was a sex crimes detective and had to deal with child molestation cases. And I've had some moron people comment on some posts that I've had that the, that the state of California has reduced. Um, the ability uh, in, in many cases to um, uh, keep track of child molesters and pedophiles that is giving judges the alternative. Well, maybe you don't maybe need to be, uh, uh, you know, you, I know we, you raped a 14 year old child and you had sex with them and diddled them and did this kind of stuff. And they said that they gave you permission to do that. But the fact that they said that, that you know, you had a 14 year old kid said, well, I gave that 24 year old adult permission to diddle me. Um, and so the judge, well, well, because you, the 14 year old gave you permission, now you don't have to be registered as a sex offender. What? Are you kidding me? Are, you're, 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 you're kidding me right now. But no, that they just, that is passed as a law, right? Uh, you also have a law here in California that allows children eight years of age to decide whether they want to be boy or a girl. Eight years of age to decide whether they want to have hormone treatment to stop the, um, um, the development into a boy or a girl. Eight years of age without parents. Listen, um, we had some horrible things going on here in California. Our, 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 Cal- our state is, uh, and you're going to say, well, how can you have joy about that? Because I have joy that we are now waking people up. I necessarily did not know about this stuff happening in our, uh, our, our once great state. Our state has gone down to a, the lowest level of just lack of common sense. And the, the fact that I have any friends that vote Democrat, that that do not under, do not that, that believe that a child molester a a pedophile is okay that that's okay the fact that i have any friend that that black lives matter is a thing right that i go wait a minute and i have christian friends that are democrats i have jewish friends that are democrats and i look and i go wait a minute do you know have have you paid attention <laughs> to what black lives matter does what they believe in you know, the destruction of uh, the nuclear family that they, a, a mom and a dad and children living together under a run roof is bad. Uh, I, I, did, did you hear that? That pedophiles no longer have to register as sex offenders? Did you, did you know that? That that's your party that you're voting for? That that's who you're putting? Did you know that the vice president nominee, that she's raising money to, to release rapists, to release rioters, to release looters, that she's raising money? She's promoted Black Lives Matter and, and, and Antifa. Do you, do you know that? That's who you're voting for? And you're a, you're a Jewish Democrat? You're a, a Christian Democrat? Really? Makes no sense. This is it's just so bizarre. And I, and I know these people. And I looked at them as intelligent people. And yet there's some, ah, you, you, I'm still, you don't know what's going on with Black Lives. No. Black Lives Matter and Black Lives are two completely different things. You dimwits. 
Have you not paid attention? Do you not what, know what's going on? Are you one of those people standing in front of a burning building saying the building's not on fire? Are you one of those people? Apparently you are. All right. So we got uh, he say John may not talk about anything that I just talked about, but it's worth listening to what she has to say here. Listen to what she has to say. Um, I'm going to play about um, uh, it's going to be another four minutes, but it's good. I promise you it's worth listening to. Please listen to what um, Heidi St. John has to say on this topic and uh, in regard to our children here in California. And uh, those of you that are, that are listening in other states, don't think this is not it's probably happening in your state, too, or it's going to be coming to your state especially if you live in a democratic run city or uh, state, they are, they have lost their mind. They've lost their uh, uh, ever loving uh, mind. Uh, And they, and uh, Dennis Prager, I know we talked about Democrats, not necessarily being left, but Democrats are moving left, right? Do we not see that? Do we not know that? Do you not know that the puppet otherwise known as uh, 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 Joe Biden is, is not going to be running this country? Do you, do you, do you really not know that? Again, that's, that's another thing that I just find so strange to people that I, I used to think had common sense and, and knowledge and intelligence, that they really think that Joe Biden is somebody that they should vote for. It is, it, are you, you know you're not voting for him. You, you know that he's not, he's not going to be president. Very, very bizarre. All right, so let me bring up, uh, um, sorry, hey, Heidi St. John. Uh, I think you're uh, going to like what she's watching. Hey, Amy, nice to see you. <laughs> I got to mute my mic. Hold on. us as we are called to do so. You guys, we have all but lost the battle for education here in the United States. The radical left has infiltrated the public school system to the point where it is almost not even recognizable from a Judeo-Christian standpoint anymore. And California has been leading the way into this descent into darkness for the last generation. And today I'm going to show you some images and I'm going to talk about the headlines and things that are happening here in California, but also around the nation so that you can be encouraged to move from a place of apathy to action. I keep hearing about the silent majority. And as we're talking in the green room uh, with other speakers and with Pastor Jack and you guys, the energy in that room is amazing because these are people that care about this nation. We want to move you from a place of being the silent majority to being the vocal majority. We should never be silent. We should never sit quietly while we watch a nation literally descending into spiritual and moral darkness. And that's what's happening in our schools right now. Children in California's public schools are being targeted for indoctrination by cultural Marxists who are focused on the sexual and societal indoctrination of children. This is something we've been talking about for a long time, but now because of COVID-19, we're seeing these things really begin, and I'm pardoning the pun here, unmasked for people to see what's happening in our schools. If you're not familiar with the term cultural Marxism, I wanna kind of let you know what it is because parents need to understand what they're up against in the schools. Now you might be thinking, I'm not a parent. I don't have children in the school system. Why should I care? Here's why. The children that are being indoctrinated in our school system right now are tomorrow's judges. They're tomorrow's teachers. They're tomorrow's grandparents. They're tomorrow's doctors. And they are tomorrow's parents. And we need to care about what's happening in our school system. Cultural Marxism is a revolutionary leftist idea that traditional culture is the source of oppression in the modern world. We see this in our schools as we link education to their insistence on destroying the traditional family, the nuclear family, marriage, patriotism. This is why you see so many kids riding in the streets right now. My husband and I have been raising our seven children about 30 minutes outside of Portland, Oregon for the last 30 years. And I can tell you right now that what you're hearing on the mainstream media about how Antifa is not moving into the suburbs and how it's pretty much okay, except for Portland, is an absolute lie. And if you talk to the children, they really are children, these young people out on the street. Where did they get these revolutionary ideas? Where did they decide, where did they learn and then ultimately decide that America is inherently racist? The idea of systemic racism is coming from the public school system. 
If you talk to the kids who are riding on the streets in Portland, Oregon right now, the kids who set up CHOP, well, well, CHAZ, which was later known as CHOP in Seattle, you will find that these kids have an inherent disdain for the United States of America, which is the greatest country on the face of the earth. We have more freedom here than any other nation on the face of the earth, but our children are being taught the opposite in the public school system. They graduate from our public high schools, and then many of them translate and transfer into our public universities, where the ideas that they've been learning for the last 12 years in the public school system are cemented, and they infiltrate the culture, and you wind up with rioting, you wind up with Black Lives Matter, you wind up with the disintegration of the nuclear family, and parents, we have to learn what's happening in the schools so that we can begin to change the narrative that's in the schools. Cultural Marxists are assumed to be committed to establishing Marxism. And when you hear that this is happening, don't bury your head in the sand and say, well, those are terminologies that I don't understand. We need to become, to, we need to become educated about what's happening in our education system because the goal, listen to me, the goal is the destabilization of the United States through our education system. And the stakes are higher than you've been led to believe. The Bible teaches us that the battle that we are fighting, the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 6, is not against people. This is a spiritual battle, Paul said, that rages in the heavenly spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. This is absolutely spiritual. Riots in Portland, riots in Seattle, murders in California. The ambushing of our police officers, our brave men and women on the police force in Compton. These are inexcusable things, and yet what is happening? We are making excuses. Why? Because we have been indoctrinated as a nation, and this has begun in our education system. Sorry about that. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. I meant to uh, to close her up. Hopefully I'm back. There we go. All right. So just let me know I'm back on. I hit the wrong button, unfortunately. So I took myself. I, I ended it correctly. I just hit the wrong tab on my Chrome. So just let me know that you can hear me and I'm back on. Um, it usually does not uh, knock me off when I do that. Uh, but yeah, so so you're, you're asking me. So with all that that she said, <laughs> but you have to listen to her whole speech. It's about, I don't know, 45 minutes long. Uh, as um, Amy said earlier, she listened to the whole event. It, it is excellent. It is an excellent event. Um, but you have to listen to the whole thing. Uh, Heidi's, uh, uh, you know, talk and, and Dennis Prager and uh, the, each speaker, uh, uh, to, you know, to the next, Larry um, uh, Elder, just, oh, I was crying. I was, um, it, it was, it was craziness. Thank you, Amy. Um, it is, it was fantastic. And so back to the title of, of happiness versus joy or joy versus happiness. Are we happy that all this is happening in our uh, education system? Are we happy with, happy with, uh, what's happening in our, in our country and in our state in regard to the pandemic and, um, what's happening in regard to, uh, the liberals that, you know, destroying, our country and, and saying that we're racist. If we believe in our country, if we carry a red and white, red, white, and blue flag, if we uh, talk about Jesus and, and Donald Trump, that somehow we're racist and we're horrible people, that our country is a miserable place. Um, are we, are we happy about that? No, but what I have joy in is that it's waking people up. Uh, people, people like Amy, uh, you know, and she's, I see some of her posts and I hope that she doesn't mind me, um, uh, bringing her out that, that she said, you've caused me to now be, you know, write posts that I would never have put up before. Um, and I just a large number of people, I, I see people that are now in the walkaway movement, uh, that, uh, I know that have gone over and says, Andy, I'm going to go over the walk. I'm going to sign up. I'm, I used to be Democrat. Now I'm part of the walkaway movement. Uh, and I get these little private messages and I allow them to, to speak out. I don't always out people because I'm not sure where they're at and letting their friends know that they've gone to the walk away, um, uh, um, you know, group or something like that. Uh, and, and then again, the people at church that walk up and say, Andy, I, we've been watching you. I, we recognize you. And I wanted to come and say hi, that we recognize you from your show and just wanted to tell you that when you, when we see that you are on, that we, we stop and we say, Hey, we have to listen to see what Andy has to say, which is amazing, right? My kids barely stopped and my son just come up and was listening to what I had to say, but, um, it's just amazing that that kind of stuff. And so the joy that I have 
again, back to the, the message, I always kind of want to stay on target here, is that I'm not happy. Happiness, we are not guaranteed happiness from Jesus Christ. We're not guaranteed happiness from God. We're not guaranteed happiness from the Bible. It is not uh, from the Holy Spirit. We're not uh, guaranteed happiness. Uh, but we have joy in our adversity. Uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, you know, in, in, in the Bible, it con- there's like three or four different passages that talk about having joy in the adversity, having joy in going through trials and tribulations. And that is that is so true. Uh, I, I've talked about this such so many times in men's groups and speeches that, that I've given uh, at men's groups and, and talking about that. Uh, you know, there's some really cool stuff that comes out of cancer. There's some really cool stuff that comes out of uh, bankruptcy. There's some really cool stuff that comes out of divorce. Um, and, uh, and, and when you think, and I'm going to tell you this right now, when you think that you have had the worst life possible, or you had the worst thing happen to you in your entire life, when you think you, that is, that is you, then you hear somebody else's story. Uh, I'm not going to share anything about what I, but I've just, I've just, I, I, you, uh, on the surface, <laughs> tried to swear. so I, I was talking to a friend and I talked to a friend and, uh, um, you know, I've known this person. They haven't known me, but I've known this person for a very long time. And I and I look at them and think, wow, you know, such a such a beautiful person and family and all. And, you know, I have all have all these thoughts. And then, for whatever reason, I I have a, a, this new connection, and they tell me a story, and and I'm floored, right? Flabbergasted, I think, is a word. And you go, what? <laughs> No way. And I'm not laughing. I'm just like going, oh my God. And they have such joy. I mean, there, there, there's joy in that, hey, you know, I've been through some stuff, right? And you have no idea, but you know, some good stuff has really come out of it. And I'm just like going, wow. I, I've been telling the story about how my cancer has brought some really great stuff. That my, my bankruptcy where they hung a, a sign on my door and said, Andy, you have to be out in 30 days. And I had, and I have five, four kids married at the time and and I was the only one that had a job making money and and yet that that business was was failing had failed and you got I got a le- I got a le- what am I where am I going to go this was not I mean 7 years ago right 7 8 years I can't remember how long ago 7 8 years ago that they hung a sign on my door and said Andy you got to be out and where am I going to go where where are the six of us going to go and I had 30 days. And you're saying, thinking, well, how can you have joy? Because I didn't. I didn't have to leave my house. Some great things happened. I didn't give up. I fought. And I could tell my story. I stood on a stage maybe two or three years later. I stood on a stage and told the story about how I saved my house, how I worked hard, how I recovered, that I didn't blame anybody but myself, that I didn't blame. I didn't, I didn't have fear. I had joy. I assistant at the time go, how can you be so happy? How can you walk into this office and be so, I was still, we still had an office, uh, but I mean, everything was going bad. I couldn't pay rent. I couldn't pay mortgage. I couldn't buy food. I couldn't pay for gas. I had to borrow money for gas to go to uh, a couple places here and there. I had to borrow money from friends to get gas so I could drive places. And I walk in with, and my, my said, well, how do you walk in with a smile on your face? I go, be, I, it's going to be fine. We're going to figure it out. I don't have fear. And then out of that, I saved the house. I saved the business. I restructured the business. I, I learned how to market. I learned how to do videos. I learned how to do live video. And uh, a whole bunch of great stuff comes out of it. And I just want to encourage you that that there's a difference between ha- I wasn't happy about everything that was happening. God doesn't guarantee happiness. But you have to have joy in that he is there. there what are you going to do? I live in the greatest country in the world that is not racist, that gives you every opportunity to make it through some of the worst times in your life. I'm telling you the story that I heard from this friend, like what? I, I, I had this whole other idea about you and your family and what was going on. I can't believe what you're telling me right now. And you have in your, and I see in your eyes, the sparkle in your eyes and the, and the, and the grace that you have and the love for God that you have. And you, you're sitting there with me telling the story and I don't, I see joy. And the story you're telling me is not a happy one. <laughs> what is going on? It is really, it is, it is, it is amazing. 
And you see so many people that don't have joy, right? You have so many people that don't believe in God. You have so many people that don't look to the Bible. You have so many people that, that just, all they see is anger and fear and the destruction and the burning of buildings and the looting and taking of other stuff and expecting that you just deserve stuff because you exist, that everything should come to you for free. And then look nothing to yourself about your own responsibility. Look nothing to yourself about the, about your own education, about where you're, you know, where you're going to go and what decisions. You, the, 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 a lot of this has to do with your decisions. Having the joy in, in recovering and doing things and not giving up and not having fear, smiling through adversity and saying, you know what? It's going to be okay. You know how I know it's going to be okay? Because in, in, in some, what, no matter what happens, I'm going to end up in, in heaven. No matter what happens, I'm going to be fine. No matter what happens, I have my brains and my common sense and my hands to work and my experience in life to do something. There's always something. There's always a wanted poster on some window or door that I could do. Now, there, I mean, maybe not in California, but you could drive an Uber. Right? We, we took that ability away with another stupid law. <laughs> here in California. Um, but uh, there's, um, you know, there's always going to be joy. There's something to be joyous about. I don't know what it is, but there, I have, I'm joyous. I have kids. I have a, a, a daughter staring at me right now for some reason. I don't know what she wants. What? Do you want to make dinner right now? Yes. Make dinner right now. I don't care how much noise you make. It's okay. Yeah. Yes. You look so beautiful right now. Come here and show people what you look like. Come here. Especially with the shirt you have on. Come here. <laughs> she won't come over, uh, and I have joy. Look at this, this kids. Look at this. they're hugging each other. Oh, they're actually oh, they're, they're wrestling. <laughs> the six year old and the twelve year old are hugging. No, we are. <laughs> they're wrestling. Yeah. He's trying to get her over here right now. But do you see what I'm saying? I mean, you could have you could you can you can you, can, you can't you, maybe you're not happy with certain. You're not happy that you know certain things. I'm not. I wasn't happy that my colleagues in law enforcement hung a sign on my door and said, "Andy, you need to get out." I was not happy about that. Right, but I had joy that I had. I had options. I had friends. I had a church. You know, this next thing that I want to tell you, or I want to play with you. I'll play with you. Play for you. <laughs> that was sounded bad. The one thing I want to play for you right now is kind of a, why it's important to get involved in a church. Now, I'm not trying to convert anybody, uh, but I am trying to tell you that there. Are, it, just give it a shot. Watch some of the messages that I post on my personal page with Jack Hibbs speaking. That there may be an opportunity there for you to learn something uh, that you may not have heard before. He has a way of speaking and a way of talking about the Bible that sometimes can scare people. Right? It's not always um, um, joyous. <laughs> it's not always happy. Like well, you're going to burn in hell. Right? There are some discussions about some of the bad things that are happening that you need to know. But in the end. It always is about being with God uh, and being with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And um, and if you have not had the opportunity, um, come here, son, wearing red, white, and blue, um, that that if you haven't had that chance to watch, here, come over here, because Ray's, oh, I thought you were going to come over here, wearing your USA shirt, um, that um, it's just an opportunity. Just watch, just stomach through it, and maybe something will help you. Um, I, I know people that I, I have brought to um, uh, the interest of Jack Hibbs that have found him just an amazing speaker. And then the events that they've had since I've joined them in May um, have been incredible. The uh, Comeback California uh, event, comebackcalifornia.us that I, I posted a link, make sure and go to that, is amazing. So here I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna play, um, Ray, I can't concentrate. Um, she's behind the camera, yes. Okay, can just, yes, okay. Wait, I'm going to play something right now. <laughs> so come, come, I'm going to play a little bit here. And this is going to be uh, tough for some people, I think, but there's some goodness that comes out of it. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and you're going to see him come on the screen here. <laughs> What's going on, son? What are you doing, you little fidgeter? The main rocket out into space, those boosters fall back to Earth and then they get a GPS coordinate going and they fire a rocket and that thing comes and lands in the middle of the ocean on a platform and standing straight up. Have you seen it? It looks fake. First time I saw it, I, I said, that's fake. <laughs> there's, there's no way. It was a pilgrim. It left a point and it came to an exact same point again. That's our lives. We're not wandering about. I love this. Listen, Hebrews chapter 11, write this down. Get a tattoo, put a mark, whatever it takes, t-shirt. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 8 and 10. This is an awesome passage. 
Hebrews 11 says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. Listen, God told Abraham, Leave your city. Leave your family. Leave Ur of the Chaldees. Go. God spoke to him. And he went out. That's awesome. Here's the best part. Not knowing where he was going. Can you imagine? Sarah, uh, Abraham, where are we going? I, don't, I got this. <laughs> well, honey, where are we, but where are we going? You know how women are you know, in the car? Where are we going? I got it. It's a surprise. Mm-hmm. Where are we going? Should you turn there? No, I got it. So, Abraham, what's up? Okay, Sarah, here's the deal. God spoke to me. He said to follow him. Can you imagine the we we always point to the faith of Abraham? What the faith of Sarah? Poor Sarah. Abraham's following God. Sarah's following him. It's kind of like a marriage, isn't it? Wow. And so verse 9 says that by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as a, a foreign or a foreigner in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs. With them in the same promise, same word, same promise. Verse 10, for he waited, that is, think of it, that's the land of promise. Abraham was still uh, a pilgrim. He waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham left everything comfortable. God said, go. God had the target. Listen, Christians, this is our lives. God says, leave off your old life, the old you. Come with me. And our thinking is, just tell me where we're going and I'll come with you. Jesus says, you come with me. And the Christian life, the pilgrim journey of the Christian is every day, every week, every month, every year, he reveals more. And it's so amazing because we follow step by step. Do we not follow step by step in our walk with him, experience after experience? And then when we look back, we can see what things he has done. And it's absolutely thrilling. He was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. He went out following God, not knowing where he was going. I remember years ago when this, we came across as a small church, we came across this land you're sitting on, about 13 acres, completely vacant dirt. And uh, I remember specifically, it's strange, but I remember that as a church, we had $222,000 in the bank for savings. And this land was millions of bucks. And so we found out who owned it, and we made an offer. And our offer was so low, after the guy cussed us out, then he threw us out of his office. (laughs) It's just like, well, all right. But we kept praying. We didn't go look anywhere else. It's interesting. We looked here. And about a month later, the guy calls us up. We want to talk about it? (laughs) And... uh, Long story short, you're sitting in it. Everything around you was built by, this is what's great. Listen, people, we, at that time, we spoke to a bank. It's called Bank of the West. It's a bank out of France, I think. It's a French bank. And you know, they do this, so we're sitting there. First of all, we're trying to emit something like we know what we're doing. <laughs> yes, uh, we have this much, and we need this much, and so they said, what is your 15-year plan? What's your 15-year business plan? Our 15-year business plan is to be in heaven. <laughs> it's true. Didn't go over well. But it's true. But you know what? All along the way, I'm sure a business consultant would have told us, "You don't say that. Let me tell you. You know why God's blessing this place? Because we still do not know what we're doing. <laughs> we stopped making plans a long time ago. He knows better. Let him go. Let him take the helm. Let him take the lead. Let him take the wheel. He's amazing. You, listen, if you don't know what it's like to have him lead, you've got a wonderful thing in store for you. Because when you let him go, he knows exactly where he's going. And you're like, your hair's freaking out and you're hanging on and your lips are flapping in the wind because you're going so fast. We're trying to keep up with Jesus here. I don't know if you saw yesterday, by the way, 
If you did not see yesterday, you've got to go online. It shook. It has shaken California. Thank God. All the people, all the people we wanted to get excited about, California got excited. And all the people that we wanted to see get upset about it, got upset about it. And it was amazing. But even that day, and then earlier in the week, I had the glorious opportunity to be once again with Dennis Prager, and then with Ben Shapiro's team at the Daily Wire, and, and one media interview after another. Why? Because we just happen to be a church that's open, and God is moving, and, and they want to sit. No, I sat down with the editor-in-chief of Daily Wire, and he said, no, no, tell us, how's, how's it going? What's going on? And I, I don't know. God's doing something. We're hanging on. And that's true for our lives. Remember that. Why? Because there's the coming of the day of God. When all of this is consummated for Christ and for eternity. The next thing that we see in verses 12 to 13 is that our purpose is to warn them. We're not only to invite people, but we're to warn them. And we don't need to belabor it because it's the second time he has said it in such few verses. Why warn them? Because the Bible says the heavens will be dissolved. Being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Literally, language used by Peter under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that is modern-day physics today, astrophysics, and it's teaching. We are to warn them. But Christian, we need to be ready. We need to believe this, believe the Bible. We need to be ready, but to be ready, you got to get ready. To embrace the Word of God... Listen, how, so how do you do that? Well, real practically, I'm hearing some good news from people. I'm very impressed with the younger generation right now. I'm having young people tell me, hey, Pastor Jack, I, I gave up social media. You what? <laughs> yeah, I've, I closed out all my accounts. I've had a, a month of absolute peace. One person told me, I went back to it. I was off of it for two weeks. I went back to it and found out that nothing had changed. In the two weeks from when I was on and off, I just decided to give it up. Think about that. We're looking around, searching, checking out, getting ready. Getting ready to meet Jesus. Getting ready to tell others. Getting ready to warn them. Love does that. To be ready, you got to get ready. And you got to stay ready. Oh, so much. I could have played more. Um, I, I just was got up there. Actually, I played more than I intended <laughs> because I forgot about the actually the part about uh, the young people. My son is one of those people um, uh, just not playing Xbox right now and doing some stuff. And um, it, it is odd because there's like some times where you say, hey, son, you, you've gone a little... <laughs> It got a little too far, but it is amazing. It is this. Um, uh, oh, it has been amazing. That my my journey with this church has been amazing. My journey with uh, new people that I've been meeting lately and hearing their stories. That like I told you, like I'm I, I'm thinking that I thought that I had been through some stuff. And there's people that are contacting me now, and that I'm walking with, and I'm meeting with, and they're telling me stuff, and I'm going, what? Um, I did not. I did not see that coming. And, um, and yet there, these are people that know Jesus that, uh, that either go to this church or another church that, um, the difference between being happy and having joy are two completely different things. And I'm hoping through this very long, an hour and 15 minutes closing on, on, on 15 minute program, uh, speaking to all of you, many of you stuck it out. I've, I've, I've seen the numbers go up and I see them come down. And, um, those of you that are hanging on and sticking around, I hope that I've stayed on message that, um, it, when you're unhappy, just just try your best to find a way to uh, to get a hold of the Bible, read some passages, and find some joy. That understanding. It, it, hopefully, each one of the speakers talked about some stuff that that there's goodness that comes out of some of this really bad, nasty stuff that's happening. There's some goodness coming out of it. In the end, with Jack speaking, and hopefully that didn't take too long for some people. With him saying that. This, you just gotta, you gotta hand it over sometimes. Them not, be, this church, you should go, I go to, that, I, the one part about, that I didn't like about watching that video is that I'm sitting in the front row and I can see the little bald spot on the back of my head. That, that's the thing I focus on, right? That is, does not bring me happiness. 
<laughs> but I sure had joy sitting there on the front on the front uh, front row, uh, listening to Jack today. It was it was really good. I was I was sitting there with my daughter and my son, um, and um, with friends, and we listened to this message. I like being in front because sometimes my daughter likes to fall asleep on my shoulder. And I think she didn't fall asleep because we were there in the front row and Jack kept looking at us. And so that I had joy. <laughs> I had joy in that. Um, but the message was really compelling. Uh, and very, a lot of humor and that kind of stuff. But uh, with all the stuff, and again, hopefully I'm, I'm going to get back on track here with Jack's message is that you can have so much like the unknown, it's not just bad things that are happening. The buildings are on fire, the looting, you know, the, the shootings that are going on. The uh, I'm a former police officer. What, what police are going through right now does not bring me any happiness whatsoever. But out of it, I'm sure there's going to be some goodness in the, long, in the long run at some point that people are going to say, listen, I've had enough of this lawlessness. Lawlessness is going to be something I'm going to vote on, and I'm going to vote for the right person, which is Donald Trump, obviously. Um, I'm not going to vote for this, these other morons who are destroying our country uh, through lawlessness. It makes no sense. Even if I am a liberal, even if I am uh, somebody who uh, you know voted Democrat before, it makes no sense to destroy our country through lawlessness. Why would I vote for two people that obviously are for lawlessness? You're going to, and those people say, then you have the people that are kind of blind that say, no, that's not true. Yes, it is. You got the vice president, like I said before, who has uh, raised money and encouraging people to give money to, um, uh, for bail so that people that have been arrested can get out and go continue to do what they're doing. That's the vice president nominee, Harris, who is likely the president if she, if uh, Biden gets elected. When you vote for Biden, Harris is going to be the president. We know this. He has said that he wants to 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 um, uh, uh, have the money be uh, diverted, which is also the same thing as this this uh, uh, defunding, defunding and diverting are the same thing. Uh, don't be a moron, right? It, 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 diverting defunds. <laughs> so he didn't say defund. Okay, he didn't say, but he did say divert. It's the same thing, right? That you you have to understand that these things are happening, and you cannot make these types of votes. That the thing that I like that you can have joy of is that there's people waking up. There's people making a different decision than they made in 2016. There's people making a different decision than they made in 2008. There's people making different decisions than they made just yesterday. There's people that say, well, I was a Democrat. Now I'm walking away and I'm going to be a conservative and vote for Donald Trump. And that is what we need to have joy. We need to have joy in what it is that's going to come out of um, the churches are making a comeback. Uh, and uh, God is making a comeback. Jesus is making a comeback. The Bible is making a comeback. The Holy Spirit is making a comeback, and we all need to have joy in that. I'm a much stronger Christian now than I was yesterday uh, because of things that are happening around me. Uh, again, I have. there's a lot of work that God has uh, uh, with me. <laughs> there's no doubt, um, but um, it's a work in progress, and, I, and I'm happy. I'm happy that uh, this is all happening. All right, my friends. Uh, again, it's been a long one. I'm sorry. I uh, the videos were long, but they were worth it, I think. I hope that you found them worthwhile. And to make sure and look for the link wherever you're watching this on. Um, if you're uh, listening to this podcast, I will put the links uh, or the link for ComebackCalifornia.us. Uh, I'll put it in the description of the podcast. If you've not subscribed to my podcast, I would appreciate it. And if you've not looked on to Rumble and search my name, Andy Falco, uh, on uh, Rumble, do that. And please subscribe to Rumble because I have a feeling October 1st, um, that my social media is probably going to be shut down, much like many of our other conservative voices. Um, and so right now we're broadcasting on five different Facebook pages, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Uh, they don't have Rumble in StreamYard yet. I'm going to encourage them to uh, connect with Rumble, so hopefully that will happen too. But uh, just so you know, you may have to connect with my podcast, so make sure and do that. Go to any pod, any place, whether it's uh, uh, Apple Podcast or Spotify or iHeartRadio, and search for The Andy Falco Show and subscribe because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to stay on Facebook or any other social media uh, and also go to rumble. And I'm also on um, uh, the other one that I can't think of right now. What's it called? Uh, somebody put it on there. What's it called? Shoot. Hold on. YouTube. What? YouTube? No, I'm on YouTube. What's it called? Uh, Dan Bongino has a, a stake in it. Gosh, darn it. I can't remember the name of it. I, I, what's my problem. Hurry, Amy, if you're still watching my producer, so put it on here. I'm going to stick around one more minute just to make sure and tell you what it is. Um, I don't 
operate enough on it, but I know once I get shut down on all the social media, other social media platforms, I'll be on there. Shoot, what's it called? Oh, eBay. Amy, hurry. Somebody. What's the other uh, that platform? Social media platform. My phone. I don't have my phone. I, if I had my phone, I could find it. Amy, Bev, what, what's the... Um, Don, what's the conservative... Um, it's not conservative. It's just not... Um, blocking people, not censoring people. It's going to appear any minute now. I know there's a long delay. I'm only sticking around for this. Find me on there. You know, we were listening to um, uh, Frozen songs on the way home from church, and I got the darn song stuck in my head. I can't get rid of the... How's it go? Do it, Ray. Not Blaze, but Blaze is a good one. No, it's a social media platform. Social media platform. Amy, did you leave me? Amy, normally, what's it called? But. What? It's not called butt. Come on. My six-year-old said it's called butt. Or seven-year-old. Sorry, you're seven now. Called. Shoot. What's it called? Somebody's on. Tell me what the other one is called. Help me. Uh, Bo, bring me my phone. It's way, I just saw it. It's way over there. It is called... The problem is I'm not on there as much as I should be. It is called, hold on, Parlor. Go to Parlor on Parlor. P-A-R-L-E-R, Parlor, Parlor. Go to Parlor, P-A-R-L-E-R. Um, it's the new social media uh, platform that will not kick you off because you like Donald Trump. It will not um, censor uh, any of your posts. Um, uh, Dan Bongino owns a portion of that. Don, Dan Bongino owns also a part of Rumbler. And uh, I'm on both of those now. So make sure and subscribe. All right, my friends. Uh, I love you guys very much. I appreciate your time and effort. I know I was on a very, very long time. I know. But that's the way that I rock and roll. All right, my friends. Talk to you later. Take care. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.